If you want to sign more listings, you need to first get better at your listing presentation. That's what this video is for, so stay tuned. Hello my people, as you know, my name is Aram. I'm a real estate agent in the Chicagoland area and I apologize if my voice is a little raspy. I don't know what happened, but I'm losing it. So I figured I need to quickly film this video before I can't film for at least three days. So today we are talking about the listing present presentation, what to do and what not to do. And before we dive into it, please just take half a second. If you enjoyed the content, if you're liking what you watch, please like the video, leave a comment with your feedback, questions, concerns, future suggestions for videos. What do you want to see? What you don't want to see? And for the love of God, subscribe. <laughs> it helps me out a lot. I'm giving you a lot of free information. So do me a favor and uh, support the channel. See, I'm already losing my voice. Now, before we dive into the listing presentation, I give you some knowledge, some tips, except everything I've learned. I want to first kind of give you a point of reference because my videos are a little bit different than every other video you've seen about the listing presentation. And that's because my approach is a little bit different. You see, I'm not coming to you as some kind of a preacher or uh, some kind of a top producing agent. And I've openly said I'm not a top producing agent. I'm simply learning as I go. And I've been in this business for three years and I've made a bunch of mistakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my first year as a realtor when I had, I think, 35 to 40 listing presentations. I'm going to take away all the lessons I learned from, from the mistakes that I personally made that cost me a fortune and I paid for those mistakes. And I'm going to make sure I convey them over to you so you don't have to pay the tab because I already covered it. So don't think I'm coming to you as some kind of a preacher know-it-all. I'm simply sharing my mistakes, what I wish I would have done, and uh, what I would recommend people do if they were in a similar position. All right. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So first and foremost, my first year in the business, I had a different approach to the listing presentation. I had a, I had a four page actual presentation script memorized to the T. I could recite it backwards, spinning, doing a backflip, swimming. I could recite the whole script in my sleep. So that made it kind of super robotic. But uh, the issue I had with it, even though I was delivering the script, it wasn't me, right? Uh, it didn't really quite fit my personality. It didn't quite fit what I was wanting to do. And every single seller in every single situation is different. So having the same script for everybody just didn't, didn't make much sense to me a couple years down the road, which is why I learned from those mistakes and I made a change. Am I saying our scripts are not important? Of course not. I love the fact that I learned the script because it taught me the dialect. It taught me how to handle objections, this, that, the other. But what I wish I would have changed about all these listing presentations I went on and I probably would have signed significantly more is my approach and my perspective going in. You see, I was going in as like a, going in as a sales guy trying to close them. They have to sign today. If they don't sign today, they're going to interview with somebody else and I'm going to lose that. So we got to sign them today. So I'm going in with all this pressure I'm putting on myself, which is obviously could be good, could be bad. But for me, it was like in the middle. It was unnecessary pressure I was putting on for myself. And going in with that salesy approach, you really have to make some bold promises that then you have to live up to. Like we guarantee to sell your house in 30 days or fire me. And then you're on day 13 on the market having a minor heart attack because, Hey, we haven't gotten an offer in 13 days, but I promised them sell it in 30. What am I going to do with my life? Now you're worried about getting fired, right? Instead, I believe the right approach is going in and just simply trying to figure out what their problem is and how you can help. What can you do? can you do to help? If you go in with that approach, all the pressures lifted up, lifted off and you'll be 100% more comfortable, which means you will be more confident, which is, uh, at the end of the day, what really matters and what's, what gets you business. If you're not confident, no one's going to want to hire you to sell their home point blank period. So that being said, it's important to also understand what kind of a listing presentation you have. There are really two, two categories. There's the, you cold call an expired or for sale by owner and you're going on a listing presentation. What this means is you're probably going to be competing with maybe three to five other agents, sometimes seven, and they're all relatively going to be saying the same thing. So you got to be worried about how to set yourself apart from one another and definitely be on your A game. You can't really make uh, any mistakes because now the seller has many options to go with. And if they're an expired or a FISBO, they're already not the biggest fan of the real estate industry. So you have to be on your A game. And you really can't make too many mistakes. So it adds extra pressure. So if that's the kind of listing appointment you have, just be aware of it, but still going with that mindset saying, look, I'm coming here. I'm going to figure out what your problem is and what I can do to help you. If I can't, no problem. If you have that approach, number one, you will automatically set yourself up uh, away from the competition and you will stand out. 
And two, you're going to relieve, a lot, like I said earlier, a lot of pressure off your shoulders and you're going to be more comfortable. And then you can have a conversation and then you're actually going to enjoy yourself. You're going to build a connection that's going to last a lifetime. Instead of closing a deal, you're going to be making a friend. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Anyhow, another way you could set a listing appointment could be a referral or somebody saw one of your postcards or you just cold call them out of the blue, circle calling. And uh, these are a lot easier and you don't really have to be on your A game but because this, they're not really going to be interviewing any other agents. They say, I think the statistic is 80% uh, of sellers uh, just interview one agent and they hire that agent. So knowing that statistic, you pretty much have it in the bag if you, they're the, you're the only agent the interviewing. So as long as you're skilled and you know what you're talking about, you don't really have to be perfect. You probably pretty much got it in the bag. Just go in and try to help them out. So that's the mistake I made with the process and the mindset of going in for a, for a listing presentation. And when I switched that around, I found not only was it a lot easier and less nerve wracking to go on the presentation, but the process of selling the house is a lot easier because now when I call for a price reduction, they're not saying, Oh, but you told me you sell in 30 days. They're saying, okay, well, you, this makes sense because this is this, this, we tried this, this, and that, right? It's a completely different ballgame and it's so much more enjoyable than sales, 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 close, close, close. Now, you get to the listing presentation. What on earth are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say? And why on earth are you even there? Well, that's why I have listed four things down and I'm going to keep it as simple as possible because this is a simple business. I think people overcomplicate it to get you to overthink and then buy some stupid course. And then you realize it's so simple. It's really that simple. Here's all you need to do. When you're going for a listing presentation, the first thing you got to do is find out their motivation, their why, what problem they are trying to solve, what is motivating them to sell their house, rent a house. It, it really applies for everything. But when obviously we're talking about listing presentation. So number one, when you're going in, you ask to tour the house. Once you're done touring the house and you understand exactly what you're selling, you sit down at a table. Do not sit down in the living room or living room only because if you have to show comps, you're reaching over the table like this and it's just embarrassing. So sit down at a table and the first thing you need to figure out is their motivation. So this could be as simple as, all right, Jerry, so tell me exactly why you want to move and why you want to do it so quick. What's your timetable? Tell me exactly what you're looking to do. So let's see how I can help. They tell you their motivation. They're looking to downsize. They want to sell in three months, et cetera, et cetera. Or they're getting a new job. They need to be reloc relocated in about less than three weeks, whatever their case is. But motivation is key because it's important for you to also know that they're really interested in selling so you don't waste your time. Nothing is worse than an unmotivated seller who will not ad adjust at all to the market and you'll just have a listing sitting there and making you look bad. So. It's important to work with motivated sellers so you don't waste your time. So number one is motivation. Number two, which is the same as uh, the buyer consultation, you want to set expectations. This is so, so, so important. And this goes into two different categories. Number one, you want to set expectations for what it's going to look like when you go on the market. Here's how I generally set expectations. Okay, we're going to go on the market and we're going to adjust as we go. If we have less showings, we're going to have to sit down and talk. I'm going to call you every Tuesday or whatever the case is. This is what you can expect. Most showings are going to come in in the weekends, but understand some short notice uh, will come too. Except, so just set their expectations so they're prepared for everything. If they have to clean their house, uh, get a stage, whatever, this is that part. You're setting their expectation so they're not surprised by anything. For example, if they don't know the market is bad, set their expectations so they don't expect to sell in two days, that it might take 30 to 40 days, right? Very, very important. This is something I was not doing at all. My first year with these 35, list, 35, 40 listing appointments, didn't do it not one time and it caused a huge, huge problem because when you don't set expectations, when, it, when you're having problems selling it, big problem, big problem. Because they're not, they're like, what? What? I thought you told me this was the right price. Now you tell me it's not the right price. Well, if you went back and explained to them, well, listen, the market changes all the time. This might be the right price today or might not be the right price. We have to adjust. Now that leads me right into the price. This is, I would say one of the most important things to talk about, because if your price is off, you're not going to sell and they're not going to move. That's it. That's it. So it's important that you actually, number one, before you even start looking at comps, explain why the uh, price is uh, important, right? Again, this is the second part of setting expectations. Set expectations for what they're about to see, right? Be like, look, here's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at active listings because they're your competition. We're going to see how many days they've been on the market, this, that, and the other. We're going to use them as an experiment so you don't have to waste the time. 
Second, we're gonna look at some expired listings and see what we really need to avoid 100% to actually get the house sold because these people didn't sell. And then we're gonna look at what actually sold in the neighborhood so we can pretty much mimic exactly what they did and get this property sold. That's setting expectations and then maybe explain why overpricing is a big problem, da 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 da, so they understand what they're getting themselves into. And then discuss price. Now, with the listing presentation, oftentimes sellers wanna overprice. And it's our job to educate them properly. Now, you may educate them properly, but they might not believe you. Or, this might shock you, but you might be wrong. I've been wrong many, many times in the past. Now, am I wrong like dramatically? No, maybe 10, 15K off. And it happens, you're a human being, you are going to make mistakes like this entire video. <laughs> I'm literally sharing my mistakes, right? So, is it okay to overprice if the sellers are not gonna budge? Only if you set the expectation that in two weeks, if you don't have an offer, you don't have an, uh, any traffic at all, you're going to sit down and talk about the price. This is something I was definitely not doing all I was saying, no, I need my price, and then if I didn't get my price, then I don't want the listing. And that's, that's pretty much throwing away a bunch of opportunities because a lot of sellers simply are like, well, you know, I want to try it for two weeks. And they're like, oh, well, we tried it. Clearly, it doesn't work because you've, you've told me what to expect and how to know when a house is overpriced. And look, clearly, this is what I'm dealing with. My house is overpriced. And when I started doing this combination, I realized instead of me calling this, uh, the seller to talk about the price reduction, it was the opposite. Sellers are calling me saying, look, we haven't sold in two weeks, what do you think, of, should we lower the price? Then we have a conversation because when you're going in trying to help them and solve their problem, you are not becoming friends and they trust you and they can actually have this legitimate conversation. They're not looking at you as some kind of a sales guy who's gonna sell their house and they're never gonna hear from again, right? So that's why uh, the approach is so, so damn important. And then finally, the number one question you have to answer as uh, the real estate, real estate agent at the presentation is, why you? Why on earth? Out of, in my market, it's like 48,000 real estate agents. Why on earth would any seller hire Aram over anybody else? And here's the beautiful part about this. I would say 70, no, 65 to 70% of the time at these listing appointments, now one time was I asked, what am I gonna do to market the house? And very rarely, I would say I was asked to lower the commission. Generally, they would just not say anything, so there were hidden objections, but they wouldn't even bring it up, especially with what are you gonna to do to market my house. So the why you question, don't waste too much time sharing your marketing plan, okay? If they ask, go right on in. That's the client that's interested, they wanna know it's important to them, go right on in. But if they don't ask about your marketing plan, half the time they're not even gonna ask you what are you gonna to do to sell your house. You know why? Because when you sat down with them, you walked around their house, you talked to them about what problems they have and how you can help, and you set their expectation and you talked about price in a professional manner where it shows that you are skilled, know what you're talking about, and you're the man for the job. So if you did these three things right and the conversation's flowing in the right direction, they don't need to ask you why you. They don't need to ask you about your marketing plan. They won't even ask you to lower your commission because they not only see the value, they feel the value, they, they see it, it's right there, they understand what they're paying for. And they're paying for the skill level, the knowledge, just that, the other, the experience, and that is like what's a key fact that's missed. A lot of agents are like just sitting there like, okay, I have this beautiful brochure I'm gonna show them, I got my iPad, we're gonna do a thousand open houses, we're gonna call the neighborhood, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care, because at the end of the day, none of that works. At the end of the day, if you have it, Price right, it's on the MLS with great photos, it's easy to show, that is what sells a house. Your brochures ain't gonna sell, your open house ain't gonna sell, any of that, it's not gonna work. The price is that eventually is what's gonna sell the house. So, don't worry about the small stuff, simply go in and let your presentation and your conversation do the quote, selling for you. So, that's all I got for you ladies and gentlemen. It is a very important part of our business, is the listing presentation, it goes in with the buyer, uh, consultation. If you kind of go back and watch that video, you'll notice there's a, a lot of similarities, right? And a lot of it is simply trying to help people solve their problem. We are the professionals. We come in with the knowledge and it's very, very important that we come in with the knowledge and we let them make the decision because it is their home. It is their investment. It is their money, right? But obviously you don't want your clients making mistakes. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'm gonna ask you again, please leave a comment, like the video and subscribe so we can grow. I can help more people, this, that, the other. And you don't have to spend any money on courses because I'm here, I'm giving away for free like my boy Ricky Carruth, all right? Oh, if you don't know who that is. For the love of God, YouTube Ricky Carruth and watch all of his stuff. It's gold. Anyhow, thank you for watching. Have a great day.